Hey, this is David Wells with Serverless Inc. Today, we're announcing the web task provider integration with Serverless, and we're gonna walk through that and walk through some of the benefits, and I'm gonna show you a quick demo. So let's jump into it. So on the blog, you can check out the post. We talk about uh, all the benefits that come with using web task. Let's go through a couple of them real quick before we jump into the demo. So big one right off the bat, no cold starts. So that's a you know problem with some of the other providers. There's a cold start time, latency added to your function if it hasn't been triggered in a while. Uh, web task gets around that, which is awesome. Uh, the setup, which we're gonna see in this demo, takes literally like less than 30 seconds. So no fiddling around with like a bunch of permissions, putting in a credit card anywhere. It's so streamlined, it's amazing. Uh, Node 8 support uh, out of the box. So a lot of other providers aren't necessarily there yet. Um, and also persistent storage. So you can actually persist state. Uh, it's a limitation of about 500K. It's a JSON doc. Uh, but yeah, that's another kind of benefit there. All right, let's go ahead and run through how to actually get up and running uh, with the demo. Okay, so first things first, if you haven't yet installed the serverless framework, you're gonna to wanna to do that with npm install serverless-g and that'll install serverless globally on your machine. Once you've done that, you're ready to rock and roll. Uh, let's go ahead and make a new directory for our service. Make directory, we're just gonna call it web task demo. It already exists because I've already created it. Awesome, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and cd into that, cd into web task demo. Uh, what we can do with the serverless framework, if you run the serverless command, sls is the shorthand for serverless. You can also just type out uh, serverless and that'll give us back all the commands available to us. Uh, what we're gonna actually do is create a new service with um, the web task Node.js template. So I'm gonna clear that. So I'm gonna run serverless, create dash dash template, and then web tasks dash Node.js. And then that'll go ahead and create our template for us. So I've already done this in this directory. Let's go ahead and pop that open and see what we got. So inside of this web task demo folder that we created, uh, I have a handler file. This is my actual function code that we're running. Um, very familiar to Lambda or other providers uh, where we have a context and a callback. Um, and yeah, we fire the callback at the end there. And then uh, the serverless.yaml file where we configure the name of our service, the provider that it's going to run on, um, and then actually the function that we want to trigger. So in this case, we just have the simple handler. Uh, by default with web task, everything is HTTP, driven by an HTTP event. You can also do cron events as well though. Um, and there's a quick demo of how to actually set up environment variables with this. But uh, one thing that we do need to do is actually npm install the web task provider plugin. Um, you can do that with the SLS plugin install command or just run npm install because we have it listed in our package.json file. Um, and you can see that plugin listed here. Cool, so the plugin is successfully installed. We have our node modules folder. Um, the next thing that we want to do is actually uh, configure our provider credentials. So you need to set up a web task account to obviously put your functions into your web task account. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna clear the terminal here and I'm gonna type in serverless config credentials dash dash provider web task. So if you're using another provider, obviously you put in like AWS or what have you, but we're using web task here. So let me actually show you how awesome this is and how easy it is to set up. So I'm gonna go ahead and run that and it says, okay, no profile found, so let's create a new one. So I'm gonna go ahead and type in my phone number. I'm gonna to need to blur this out for the video no text messages please um, and I have my phone here so let me actually turn that on turn up the brightness all right enter cool so now it's prompting me for a verification code and now I have the text message verification code right there boom immediate so I'm going to type that in there we go. Cool. So yeah, so now I am ready to go. I'm ready to deploy my web task. So now I'm actually gonna do that. So I'm gonna run serverless or again, SLS. 
and then deploy. So what is it gonna do? It's gonna take my code in that handler file, read the serverless.yaml and the config about that and deploy that up into WebTask. And here we have our live URL endpoint. So if I go ahead and open that up, you can see, boom, there's the message coming back from my function. If I go back into the code, we can look and see uh, there is, you know, hello. So, wow, that was fast. I'm gonna save that, go back into the terminal, go ahead and run serverless deploy again. And that'll pipe up the code once more. And let's go ahead and open that again. And boom, wow, that was fast. So that's it in a nutshell, like getting set up and rolling with WebTask. It literally will take you about 30 seconds to do. Um, and you can be deploying up your functions uh, that fast. That's amazing. Uh, I love what they've done with the developer experience here. Super jazzed about it. Um, right now, my, my code really does nothing. It's just returning a JSON object. It's basically it contains the message here. Um, but what you can do is, is really uh, anything you'd want to do with the Node.js ecosystem. So I can actually, you know, uh, import uh, request modules or the Twilio modules in text messages. I could import, you know, the Mandrill SDK and send emails. I can, whatever you can, you want to do uh, that you can do in Node.js that doesn't take longer than five minutes to execute, you can do in a web task. So that opens up a wide variety of use cases that you can use for um, you know, running your web task services uh, all through the serverless framework, um, which you're you know, familiar with, uh, hopefully. Um, the, other, the other thing that you can do here, I'm just gonna show you real quick. So let's say I wanted to actually run this on a cron job so I can set an events uh, and I can set this to schedule and then I can set it to rate. And let's say I wanna run this function every hour. So if I went ahead and redeployed this, this would then you know run my handler code um, every hour instead of on the actual HTTP request. So that also opens up a wide variety of use cases for checking uh, different websites, doing health checks on your other services. I mean, the sky's really the limit there. So that's, that's really it. That's the um, web task uh, integration in a nutshell. Um, make sure to check out the blog post uh, if you're seeing this on YouTube. Um, the code is all open source as well. Uh, I'm gonna link to that in the blog post. Um, and yeah, if you have any feedback, suggestions, comments, uh, we'd love to hear it. Uh, the web task team worked e extremely hard on this, getting this out the door. So a uh, big shout out to Glenn and Randall over at uh, Auth0 on the WebTask team for creating the WebTask Providers plugin. Thanks, and I will talk to you guys later.